Hello and welcome to the Harwood Report for December 26, 2017. As always, the Harwood Report is presented by Trade Academy, and I am Keith Harwood, the founder of Trade Academy. I hope everybody had a wonderful long weekend, and we're going into the end of the year here, so let's see what uh, the charts and the vol are telling us are good trade opportunities. But before I get into that, the standard disclosures, all services and content are provided for educational and information purposes only and are not intended as legal or financial advice. Everything I talk about here is the way that I'm looking at the markets really for the start of the week. I do a midweek update for the premium subscribers and then, you know, we go, I reassess constantly. But this is how I want to start off, set my game plan. And that's from, from my um, point of view. I think you guys can learn a lot from it but do not consider it to be trade advice. You should consult with a financial professional before you execute any trade. Options do have risk. Uh, and so with that, I'm gonna go into the normal equity indices here. SPY in particular looks interesting going into the end of the year, given where it is right now. Bonds, TLT, I think is interesting uh, as it was last week where I was looking for some bearish move and, and it got it um, probably more than I really would have expected. Uh, and then bounce back actually at the end of the week and a little bit to start this week. So we'll look back at that again. Gold is setting up to potentially be a really interesting trade right now. And um, it's because of my normal slogan there at the dollar yen relative to where gold is right now and what gold is doing. Some of this action could be driven by end of year flow, which I'll talk a little bit about how I want to structure my trade given that. And finally, oil. Um, a big bull last week, uh, talked about it more, a little more in the premium product and those were some of the ex more exciting trades for me. Um, we've had a run, oil still strong. I'm gonna look back at this and see how the end of the year may run here, just given the way that oil is moving, we may see more upside. And there's ways to express that view with a little bit lower risk and a lot more leverage using the options here. So we'll come back to that right at the end. Uh, so with that, Really, I wanted to start with fear and greed. Still in a reasonably normal mode, uh, and really the thing that's helping keep it from being too frothy is this junk, band, junk bond demand. Um, basically, people are looking for bonds. Unlikely, honestly, it's in the oil names because of the run that we've had in oil and in the oil names. Um, a lot of junk bonds in the oil sector, but as oil prices go higher, uh, it's possible actually that some of these junk bonds get a little get regraded as these companies get into better financial positioning. Um, and we've had some squeeze in the stocks as a result. So, you know, this, this may be doing some work on the oil names. Note that that spread has actually really widened. Um, and, and that's something to, to watch into the end of the year. But, you know, there's just a general desire still for bonds after having that initial uh, break at the beginning of last week. The rest of this stuff is still in that sort of greedy phase. If greed gets up towards the 80s, that's a really good time to bet on a pullback generally speaking towards a key moving average. And when it gets down to these like 20s and 30s, that look really good bullish structures just because it's probably a little bit too much fear in the market given where we are today. Um, but right now, I think that there's nothing really too concerning about this fear and greed. So I want to start with SPY. Uh, notice that the 10-day moving average has really provided nice support here throughout the month of December. The last time we really were below it was in November, a little over a month ago. Not that long ago, but still, it, we've held above it pretty well. A pullback and a close below the 10 day moving average could create a little bit of a uh, red flag. For me, the 10 day moving average right now is just over 267. If this can hold today, we're going to be looking for a play for a new all time high. The last few times we've, we've held it, we end up getting into a new all time high. And a new all time high really actually meshes well with uh, the $500 level, or sorry, $2,700 level in the SP 500 futures. So that'd be about 15 points from here buck and a half that gets us around to 68 and a half I guess um, in SPY so we'll pull back up SPY and this is what we're looking for 268 and a half ish right at those highs so I, I wouldn't be surprised to see that happen um, late this week as we go into the end of the year and that's something I'll be looking at in terms of structuring with options as a result so one of the things I know here is volatility is kind of cheap here at 8% um, given that the spread to realized volatility has tended to be a little bit wider, but it's not super cheap. I mean, I'm, I'd be looking, anything under 7% is, is a slam dunk. That said, if I go to the this Friday and get under 7%, historic volatility has been just around there. And if I'm looking for that move, I mean, I can look at some of these 268s for 35 cents and know that those are probably going to pay off about fine. 
269s or the outlier plan, I'm not really sure I love those. Or if I go to the following Wednesday, I can look at the calendar. This calendar should pick up some decent value into a rally, but if I look at the 269 call calendar, bang, 33 for these GM third 269s, and then selling out these for about 12 cents, I'm in pretty good shape. So I'm gonna look at that cal calendar for 21 cents, knowing that if we rally toward in, up towards that 268 and a half level towards the end of the year, this performs really well. So that's uh, that's kind of my first idea for this week. Notice that there's a good ball discount here. I'm buying 6.2% there and selling. You know, it sounds cheap, but seven, uh, just under 7% here. But when I'm getting a discount to buy next week, I'm okay with that. So I'm buying really cheap ball for next week and financing it with a little less cheap ball for this week. Let's go to the next um, sector, and that's going to be the queues. So, you know, I generally have looked at the queues and said, well, you know, my, my, main, con my main concern is SMH. Note that we got below the 10-day moving average today. 20 moving average would be a logical stopping point, but that didn't hold very recently, even, even at the beginning of December. So I think what we're not looking at key moving averages as stopping places here in the queues. They just haven't provided a lot of support. I think we're just looking for key levels. So 154 and a half would be a support level where I think I could take a little bit of a shot on the long side or a move back above the 10-day moving average just gets a little bit of bowl flow. I know that, you know, the high was 158.77 and we're a couple bucks away. Maybe end of your window dressing pushes up to the highs, but I don't feel like I have a really good edge in the queues right now. Um, it might just be more of a chop trade for me. IW, oh, uh, and I mentioned that SMH, this could be another signal for me. SMH is below all these moving averages. If that can reclaim the uh, the 10 day moving average, which is 98.75, then that would be a signal to me that maybe this liquidation of the queues is over and done with. Did have the MACD cross last week that got me a little bit more excited. It's not getting a lot of follow through. So I really need to see us moving back up towards uh, above 98.75 and ideally push towards 100 um, to really get excited about the queues again. This is the semiconductors uh, ETF. IWM. It's fine. We're going to the end of the year. There's nothing here to me. Sure, maybe we make a new all-time high. Maybe we drift down on sector rotation. I don't know which sector flow is necessarily going to be the strongest. It seems right now it could be an oil. If it goes to financials, and that's going to put IWM towards new highs. If it goes towards tech, obviously that pulls off the queues. If it just stays in oil, that's not necessarily anything special for IWM or the queues. This could just be chop again. But I think that um, for me, the, the one benefit here is that we're still above key moving averages. So maybe that gets you a, me a little bit more of a bullish chop as opposed to the queues where I'm sideways until I see SMH go bullish. And finally, the Dow Jones. There's um, nothing really different here than what I see in the S&Ps. You know, the only flag here is that MACD cross, but I don't think that's going to be too big of a problem given that the last time we had a MACD cross, that just meant sideways for, you know, a month. But you get chop here. And if we're going to get, I mean, basically the move to the new all-time high level that I was talking about for the end of the year is effectively just chop. It's not a huge move. So let's go to TLT. TLT had a massive break to start the week. <clears throat> so I was talking about the 126 puts when we were trading here. Dropped all the way down to 124 and then bounced. And I actually highlighted this in the midweek video last week for those of you that are um, not on the premium subscription. But um, it seemed like this move below may have a repeat, repeat of this kind of action. But if the S&P is going to make a new all-time high, this has to get a pullback at some point. We're not at a level right now that gets us into an incredibly frothy level, but I just don't know that it can get much above 126.5 without something pulling back in the S&Ps. So if the S&Ps close below the 10-day moving average, maybe there's a little bit more demand for risk off. Um, we're seeing a little bit of in gold, but we're not seeing much of it anywhere else. Right now, just like in IWM and the Qs, I don't see a big trade here. Once we move towards 126.5 or back down towards 124, I can get a little bit more excited. But for now, this looks like chop with a maybe a slight uptrend. And because of the way the risk parity funds work, where they're buying both bonds and stocks, yes, we can have bonds and stocks going up together, as we had seen throughout the last month. Traditionally, you'd see those go the opposite direction when people are trying to trade towards risk off. But, you know, there's been some allocation to both. Um, so we'll just kind of keep an eye on this and look for a price level to get into a trade. And 125.5 is not that price level for me. 
Let me move over to the gold trade because I think this has got a little bit more excitement to it. So dollar yen was very strong to start last week, pushed us above the 10 day moving average to, uh, and above the 200, uh, sorry, 100 day moving average, basically all the moving averages we got back above. Um, and you can see that that's holding right now. We're above the 10, we're above the 20, we're above the 50, and then the 100 and the 200 are well below. This is traditionally bearish for gold. And yet what we've seen is GLD continues to rally. I think this has got to have something to do with end of year flows. So we've had some money flowing into commodities as a result of the oil move. That's helping drag up gold, but gold doesn't have a really strong justification for getting a bid here. Risk off isn't a great trade. Yields are generally a little bit stronger. Dollar yen has been strong. So th there's not a really, yeah, I, I don't see a strong reason to push for bullish gold. We've pulled up all the way into this consolidation area here, which was the October, November range, basically. This is a time for me to look to potentially extend some shorts. But before I do that, I want to look at each of the potential ways to play it. Silver, you know, if it was at 16, I'd probably say that that was a better short. But, you know, this has potentially got 50 more cents of upside if gold is going to continue higher. So that's not it. GDX, that's been a little bit of an outperformer, sitting near the highs here at 23. So that's a little bit um, interesting because it's gotten a bit more of a run. And GDXJ has had the best run of all of them. Now that's pushing up towards these highs. I think that if I want to play something right now to extend shorts and gold for New Year money flowing right back out, it's got to be in GDXJ. And let me take a look at GDXJ vol. So volatility-wise, 23.5% is very cheap, 24% is very cheap, 25 is still reasonably cheap. If I go back six months ago, it was trading in the 30s. If I go back a year ago, GDXJ vol was tra I'm trading in the 50s. And it was realizing at that point of that rate. You can see that there is a bit of pickup in realized volatility here. 25% vol is still pretty cheap. And if I go out to maybe even as late as the January 26th or January 19th. Let's start with January 19th. I can see some really cheap puts here at 25%. So if I look for these January 19th, 33 puts for 47 cents, that gives me really good leverage if we get that pullback. Again, 33 is right here. So the move to break even is back to 32 and a half. And I don't see a reason why I wouldn't think that there's a decent chance to move back towards the low 30s near $30, below 31. That's a little bit more of an outlier play. I could get a little bit more leverage by getting into the 32 and a or the 32s. But what I would, what I'm going to look to is do is start with some 33s or 32 and a halves, but I'll start with the 33s as a, a starting point at 47 cents. And then I'd be looking to roll down these puts as the market breaks using the gamma and the vol pickup to play for that because even though vol is cheap, it's not necessarily going to get much more expensive on our break unless that break happens fast. So this gives me a good balance of probability and leverage with a 30 delta put. So that's the Jan 33 put for 47 cents. And finally, we'll go over to the oil sector. So USO just continues higher and it's breaking out today. It just looks great. Pressing against the yearly high. So we're talking about a pretty darn good move in oil. It's going to close on year highs, which is a full retracement from the beginning, first day of the year. XLE, on the other hand, beginning of the year, it's around $76. It's had a nice run. It's not quite back. It's got a little more upside there if it's going to fully retrace. Oh, and OIH, of course. And some of these companies had some problems as a result of being um, seeing oil low for long. They got into financial problems. But right now we're breaking out these levels right here, 26, 27, 26, 15, et cetera. Those were all before the dividend. The dividend came out, it was 45 cents. So really those levels on this chart would be closer to 25, 85, 25, 80 range. And we're above that right now. We're above 26 bucks. I don't see a lot of resistance until we get up here towards 28. If we're going to go for end of year allocation into oil names, this is the way I think that I have to play it. And I'm playing it still a little bit. Um, I had taken some money and I'm thinking about reallocating here because one of the things I do see here is that all at 24 and a half percent is pretty cheap with the move potential here. And when we've had some rallies, we've gotten into the thirties in the past. So OIH, if I go to January where I'm already located, 
We've got some January 26 calls. These aren't very leveraged, but they are good for a delta in probability. What I want to look at for playing to the upside is these January 27 calls for 30 cents. Under 25% volatility is very cheap. So if I can look at those for 30 cents, that's a more leveraged way for me to play this potential move into the end of the year and then also into the new year. As long as oil stays high, OAH I think still has some room to run. And as I said, I'm looking for a move towards 28 over the next three weeks. That plays pretty, pretty well for these January uh, 27 calls. I actually had some of those last week, took them back off, and now I'm looking to put them back on um, given the way that oil continues to move. And my flag here would be if oil starts to break. And right now it's not breaking, it's continuing higher. So that's it for uh, <clears throat> for the week, folks. Um, as I mentioned a few times, there's the premium um, report that's uh, that you guys can sign up for. It's free for a month. Um, you get a lot more information. I talk more about how I can trade some of these sideways markets, uh, IWM and the queues that I outlined, um, and also highlight some of the best, some of the ways that I trade and then modify my trade for names like OIH and XLE that had good runs last week as well as TLT. Um, and as I said, it's free for a month. So, and after that, it's only forty nine dollars. So that's uh, that's a pretty cheap deal given the uh, the amount of information I put out there. Go to tradeacademy.co slash Harvard Report to sign up. And as always, you can email me Keith at tradeacademy.co or call me 312-600-8004 with comments or questions. And follow me on Twitter at tradeacademy.co. I'll talk to you all soon and have a wonderful uh, rest of your holiday week.